Today I want to talk about trend lines. Now, by definition, a trend line for an uptrend is a set of higher lows, and for a downtrend, it is a set of lower highs. I don't really use trend lines as much as I used to. Uh, they can be valuable, especially when it comes to letting you see what is going on in the trading and determine price levels. I typically use some other indicators now, I do most of my trading, so you may not always see trend lines on my charts. Uh, if you're new to trading or you just like trend lines, they certainly can be valuable and I may start trying to put them back on my charts again just because I know a lot of people do like to trade the trend lines. Uh, I want to go over kind of how I do it. I typically require three points in order for me to consider it a trend line as opposed to two, three or more. Uh, I also start at the weekly and then I go to the daily. I usually do not draw trend lines on any lower levels than weekly and daily. Um, I just don't think that they are quite as strong at the lower levels. If you're doing a, you know, I might do a one hour or a four hour chart if I'm trying to swing trade at those price levels, but I rarely do that anymore. And I do not use trend lines in my day trading unless it just happens to be, you know, a daily or weekly trend line that shows up on the chart. Uh, for day trading, I typically stick to price levels and uh, pivot points. But for swing trading, you know, tr trend lines still do have some value. So I want to go over with you how I draw my trend lines. We're going to take a look at XLY. I'm on the weekly chart. And again, I'm looking for those three touches. Now, there is a little bit of art to it because you, as you can tell right here as I draw this trend line, I, I really don't have three exact touches. But... To me, this is very close, and, and I would count this in drawing my trend lines. Uh, on the weekly chart, I'm going to edit the properties. I'm going to extend it to the right because I want it to go on forever. Uh, that will help you in the future because trend lines a lot of times will come back into play, and it also helps you to visualize price action, which to me is one of the most valuable things about trend lines is being able to visualize the price action, give ideas where you want to make your trades. So I'm going to click OK, and you see it extends off the, the chart, and I changed it to a dash so I can tell the difference between my daily and my weekly trend lines. I'm going to do the same thing for the uptrend here. I've got three points that match pretty well. I'm going to put that in. Again, I'm going to edit the properties. I'm going to extend it, and I'm going to change the way it shows up. Uh, you could go back and do old trend lines if they match up into this price level especially or are close to it. Uh, and that would give you some idea about future price action and how it might come into play. I don't really see any that, that I like uh, that I think is gonna, will come into play anytime soon, so I'm not going to do that. Now I'm going to move down to the daily time, daily time frame. Uh, and you can see how my weekly trend lines come over to the daily trend lines. Uh, you know, I, I could see a very strong argument to just, if you're swing trading, to only use weekly trend lines. I personally wouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, but I, I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to throw this daily one in because it's a pretty good one right here. It's a, not as strong as the weeklies, but it does give you an idea of what's going on in the daily chart. I'm going to extend it to the right also. But as you can tell, I've got different patterns here so I can tell the difference between my trend lines. I do not really see a, another trend line for an uptrend here on the daily chart that I would like to draw. Again, you, you can go back and, and draw old trend lines in if you think that they're going to affect this price action. Uh, to me, that's more valuable on the weekly chart than it is on the daily chart. But if that's something you wanted to do, you could go ahead and do that. Just be real careful not to get your charts overly crowded. And I'm going to pull up another chart here just to give you an idea of what I mean by that. Uh, this is another one of my indicators that I use quite a bit. Uh, it's the Bollinger Bands and the link below on how to do that. And how to set this one up, but as you can tell, it gets a little bit crowded in here once you start drawing these trend lines in. So that's why I say you don't want to overcrowd your charts. Uh, but you can get an idea of how confusing it can get if you've got a lot of indicators and a lot of trend lines. And that's one reason, again, that I, I don't use a lot of trend lines anymore. Uh, I typically stick to, to just a number of other indicators. Let's take a look at, at another uh, stock here and give you an idea of how to draw some other trend lines. Let's take a look at EWZ. Now, the first thing you notice, this is the weekly chart, and you really do not have, right through this area, 
any what I three touches that, that I would like to see. You know, this right here being side to side, it's not it, it's a little bit of a higher low, but I, I would not really use this one as a trend line. So I'd probably have to go all the way back to here to get the three touches I typically would like to see. And I'm gonna ignore that that wick on that one candle and try to match it up with the one before it. Uh, I'm going to, again, somewhat of an art here because it matches up really well with some of these other wicks. So I would go ahead and put this one in uh, and practice and it will help you get good at these. And, and as I say, there is an art to it. I, I wouldn't say there's necessarily a, a rules to it um, be, simply because I have ignored this wick here. And even, and I'm using this one, uh, even though it's a long wick, I am using this one as part of this touch here to get one, two, three, four touches. Wouldn't count this one because I'll be looking at another lower low to match it up. And I did decide on this particular one that I'm going to ignore this right here. So that was where I would draw this one. Now I talked about before drawing old trend lines and I'm going to give you an example of that right here. Uh, this is, would be an old trend line that you could put in. I'm going to put it in here, not because I think it's going to affect current price action, but just to give you an idea of what it would look like if you put this trend line in. And typically, you would want this to be somewhere in this price action or up in here in price action because it's unlikely that this trend line is ever going to affect you going forward. But if this should drop into this level in the near future, then this trend line right here, you could get some bounces off of it coming off here and or at the very least, it helps you identify what price action is going on. Because this was a nice, you know, trend line right up until it broke uh, right here. Uh, and then it came back in here and it just, it did ignore it here. But if you notice, it also came back up. So this week, there was probably news right here that drew it down. And then it came back up and it really followed this trend line. You see it bounced off of it here. And that's what I'm talking about sometimes old price action we will show you future price action. I don't really have a downtrend line I can use on the daily, so let's go, I'm sorry, on the weekly, so let's go to the daily chart, see what we've got. Uh, you know, I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere up here, so I would have to go all the way back here to try to draw a downtrend line. I do not like uh, what the, the points I've got to go off of, so I, I would not draw a down, ground trend line just because I don't, I've got one point and two points here, but I don't have a third point really. Uh, you know, this would be the next one that I would look for, but I can't match it up anywhere else. And then, of course, I don't have anything here yet. So I, I do not have a, a daily trend line that I could use. And again, like I said before, I draw them this way because I want the strongest trend lines that I can get. Because if, if I'm going to draw them, if I'm going to take the time to put them on my chart, I want to make sure that, that they... Are, are valid and that they're going to be used because, as I showed you previously, if you look at this chart, which is not, this chart's not as crowded, but if I had a lot of trend lines in here, then it really interferes with some of the other indicators that I'm using, uh, which is I look at this trade right here today, it's kind of in a buy zone right here if I were looking to buy, although the, I'm a little concerned the distance between the, these two Bollinger Bands. Yeah, that's right in the buy zone. It's just this is a little bit wide, so I'd probably be looking to do uh, sell some sort of something for a credit spread um, or some sort of uh, other type of trade as opposed to buying an option right here. But you know, this is an interesting long area, you know, and I'm kind of getting off topic. But you know, you would probably have to have your stop in this area if you did decide to go long here. Let's take a look at another one. We're going to take a look at FXY now. I uh, think this again is a weekly chart, so I'm going to start looking for where would I have three point, points that touch. And I've got pretty good, really I've got a pretty good trade, or pretty good points right here. Again, I am ignoring this wick a little bit because I've got a hit here, a hit here, and then it starts up. So I would go ahead and draw this trend line in, uh, because it's a weekly, let me change it around a little bit. Uh, normally, I would not use the current candle to draw a trend line. However, as I'm making this video, this is a weekly chart, and today's Friday, and it's in the afternoon. So I doubt that it's going to 
it extend below this one. Now, if next week it should come and break right here, then this actually would not be a valid trend line. So I want to point that out to you also. You know, if you're, I'm using it here just for an example purpose, but if next week this breaks to a lower low, then this trend line no longer has the three touches that I'm looking for. I'm just uh, wanting to show you how to draw them, and uh, I'm probably showing you a bad example here, but let's go ahead and look at the daily chat. Daily. On the daily, I've got pretty good touches right here. You know, I would count this as a daily trend line. I like the way that looks pretty well. Uh, do not really have a daily uptrend here. This is a downtrend. Uh, we, we could draw a channel line here. Again, that would be a different video, but uh, it looks to me like it's getting ready to come back up. If you're just looking at this trend line, I, I would expect a bounce up and a break below where it would, would be a sale. Let's go ahead and pull up another chart. Uh, now, if you look at this chart, uh, it's a little bit out of my buy zone, or by my buy zone here. It's or, my, or even my sell zone. You see, this would show me if I that I would probably be looking to go short, but I needed to in order to go short though. I need to get it here. So right here, yes, it is a buy, but up in this area, I would be looking more toward a short because I've got this trend line and I've got my my EMA wave and how to draw how to use this indicator. I've gotten a link below also. Let's go ahead and pull up my Bollinger Bands. Uh, it's at a second deviation here, so uh, this would probably still be a buy to me. And when it got up into this area, once again, be a sell. So there's a pretty good little trade setting up here if you wanted to trade it. But what you get to see is how the Bollinger Bands, my EMA wave, and my trend lines all work together. And as we go forward, I'll, I'll try to remember to continue to draw in trend lines. Honestly, I do not use them as much as I used to. Uh, just because I like my uh, indicators a little bit better. But just to help you out and help you visualize price action, which to me is one of the best things about trend lines, being able to visualize price action, I'll try to start trying to draw them in and give you examples of how I'm using them in my trades. Uh, as usual, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, please like this video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please put them below. Uh, I got a little sidetracked a little bit on, on the video, which is... Uh, pretty standard for me. Uh, I'll start looking at uh, how to show you indicators, then I'll find trades that I like. Uh, but uh, if you have any questions, let me know, and I'll continue to make these videos, and I'll show you some more indicators that I use from time to time. Uh, the indicators you've seen on my charts today, the links to them are all below. Uh, please take a look at them. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.